Hello fellow modelers, in this video I'm going to build small diorama from Chernobyl. I will use my abundant Mass 537 model and also try to create small house from scratch. I drew basic plan of a base and front view of the house with a correct dimensions for 72 scale. I start with walls. I will use for the whole structure only basic materials like this balsa wood, styrofoam for base and aluminum metal sheet for the roof. I use for bricks foundation styrofoam, is also called blue foam. I found the material in the shop which is focused on the construction of architectural models, but you can find it also on eBay. Now I'm creating bricks texture. You only need a sharp hobby knife and try to cut straight lines. Maybe the bricks are a little bit oversized for the scale, but large ones make life easier. You can highlight texture with a toothpick or just like me with a pencil. For cutting balsa wood is handy razor saw with which you can achieve clean cut. It is definitely better than my first try with a windows and dull blade. And one more material which comes in handy. I like hardwood beams for RC models. You can get different variety of shapes and sizes. So, highly recommend it. So the basic construction is done. I glue it to the foundation with a PVA glue and fix position with metal pins for wooden ship models. Ok, that was fun. You don't need to worry about scratch build models for your diorama. As you have seen, it is easy and cheap. I just highly recommend try to draw a basic plan of the whole structure or create demo model from paper. Now I am going to transform the house from this phase to this one. Honestly, it actually means that first I need to create a nice and clean house and then make from it abandoned scary ruin. In any case, it sounds like fun. For painting balsa wood, you can use ordinary colors or different shades of stain. You probably already know what chipping varnish is, but this one is from Vallejo and for a paintbrush. So it has dense consistency and therefore is perfect for wooden base. I let everything dry properly and meanwhile I emitted mortar between bricks with a mix of acrylic party and grey color. And I remove excess party with water when it's still fresh. So do not let the party dry out. I am spraying three or more soft layers on the chipping varnish. If you will spray one wet layer with a lot of color, you could dilute base varnish and then will be challenging to imitate scratches. Also, chipping does not work very well with latex-based acrylic colors like Vallejo or Citadel. 
but the base is from wood so that I can use some sharp tools for this purpose. I told you at the beginning that I will use some aluminum foil for the roof. However, I need corrugated iron and I seriously wonder how to do it. But MacGyver skills are always handy, so I glued cheap and old drill bits on the plastic board with a super glue and then carefully create each peak and valley with another drill bit. And you can get material from beer drinking. But if you accidentally visit Czech Republic, do not forget to buy typical Czech condensed milk in tube. The tube is made from thick but soft aluminum foil and therefore is perfect for models. So the color is dry, thus now I'm diluting base varnish with ordinary water and removing top white color. I use oil paints for final details like leaks, stains and green color for imitation of moss. The advantage of the roof from metal is that you can easily create realistic damage. I remember now that you could also use corrugated paper. I am spraying base color with a dark grass shade and again chipping varnish, but this time is pre-diluted for airbrush. Now I am applying final layer with light grey and highlights with white. And again try to spray very soft layers which do not dilute base varnish. The acrylic color is dry after a few minutes. So now I am removing top layer with water. The result is relatively dull, so that you can play with the colors a little bit more. I use rust dry pigments, which nicely makes the rust less uniform and then I again imitate some moss with a green olive color. The green moss nicely optically destroys the whole surface. So this is the result. Or not. The abandoned houses are usually covered with vegetation. I use this laser cut ivy. It is for 35 scale, but inside are also small leaves, which fit for 72 scale. I think now the house is finished and we can focus on the base. I use for base extruded polystyrene, it is similar material which I used for base foundations, but less soft and stronger. I am trying to create terrain just a little bit uneven with a packing knife. One of the major theorems of the excellent diorama is anti-symmetry, therefore I chose the position of the house to the angle and pick a place for the track not symmetrical with a base and house. If you saw my previous forest diorama, you probably already know that I used for terrain clay from dust. I found it very useful, it dries on air 
and you can smooth surface with water. And also you can sculpt structures from clay, like with stairs. I use rubber sculpting tools, which you can find in the art supply store. I use for frame my favorite balsa wood. You can paint white clay with a brown color, or mix PVA glue with acrylic colors. But also you can use acrylic texture, it nicely fix the whole base and create solid surface. I sprinkle soft sand and push to texture small stones. I forgot on the sidewalk to the house, so I am sculpting new one from clay. I want to achieve a stone texture, however in the end it will be covered with a grass. Now the funny part, vegetation. I apply on the surface layer from PVA glue. And I use for grass my cool homemade static grass applicator. I use 4mm long static grass fibers. I decided for late summer, so I apply for this purpose light green and yellow mix. The static applicator creates a stable static charge with more than 10,000 volts, but a low current. So it is safe to use, and as you can see the grass is nicely narrow. But too much uniform, it looks like an English lawn. Therefore I change this field with a sweet dry grass and longer 6 and 12 mm static grass. Ok, it looks less uniform, now I'm using another dry grass for larger vegetation. Also is handy dry moss, this moss looks like a small conifer tree. I recently got from model scene for testing this beautiful laser cut wooden fans for 72 scale. You can cut your own from balsa wood, but this one looks a little bit better. It is easy to use. I just add wooden pillars from balsa wood and paint more browns weathering. You probably think that the diorama looks very dry, and if so, I agree. Therefore I will create puddles around house foundation. 
I anticipated pepper water from the beginning. Therefore, I applied a lot of moss on the bricks and put extensive vegetation around. I used German resin water, which I mix with acrylic color. Uh, honestly, I like water effect. Even small puddle in the corner can change the whole scenery. I applied a lot of natural materials, so now I create final vegetation from photo edge parts. I like the small nettles or reeds. At this moment, I thought that the diorama is finished, but I had a weird feel that something is still missing. I look at a few images from Chernobyl and I found the details. I think cool is this typical yellow radiation warning side. I create a new one from plastic sheet and metal wire. If you do not have a steady hands, you can print side with a printer and glue paper on the plastic with a PVA glue. I also forget at the house number. Sometimes proper photo documentation is convenient. I am mostly trying with each diorama a lot of experiments because I started making this type of models just recently. I want to imitate spider web. I tested some chemicals and I use Revel glue for this purpose. If you want to spray fibers with an airbrush, you can use hair volume or crackle medium. And as usual, I add small animals. These animals are for railroad models, H0 scale, which is a little bit smaller than 72. I also wanted to add stalker figure, but I think the human figure could destroy the whole abandoned atmosphere. So I will rather create another post-apocalyptic diorama. So with these details is diorama finished. I found post-apocalyptic dioramas very interesting, primarily because I'm big fan of a stalker, fallout or Mad Max. What a nerd. I hope you found some steps useful. And as usual, thanks for watching and see you next time.